Now we install sprinkler systems in buildings to protect people and to protect property. But after we install the system, it doesn't end there. We need to inspect, test, and maintain that system to make sure it's gonna operate when needed. NFPA 25 is a standard for the inspection, testing, and maintenance of water-based systems, provides all the requirements for inspect and te testing and maintaining all of our water-based equipment. That includes sprinkler systems. What it does is it outlines uh, the specific frequencies for the specific components. So we're gonna look at chapter five uh, right here, which covers sprinkler systems. 521 specifically covers sprinklers. Now I'm just talking about the sprinkler inspections today. I'm not talking about all the other components of the sprinkler system. There's a lot more inspections and tests that need to be done in the entire system. We're just talking about the sprinklers themselves. Now what we need to do is 5211, we need to inspect them annually from the floor level. What this means is I'm not getting on a ladder, not getting on a lift, just looking at the floor level and inspecting those sprinklers. Furthermore, we've got a requirement down here that states if we've got sprinklers installed in a concealed space, they don't require inspection. So we don't have to go make access to sprinklers in order to inspect them. It's literally just the ones that we can see from that floor level. What are we looking for? We're looking for signs of leakage. We're looking for signs of corrosion that's detrimental to the sprinkler performance. We're looking for signs of physical damage. We're looking for loss of fluid in a glass bulb. Now what this looks like is, here's an example of a sprinkler. We've got a glass bulb right here. Um, we wanna make sure that that fluid's still in there. So the way that bulb actually works is there's an air bubble in there and then there's fluid. As it heats up, that air bubble is going to expand. Once it reaches a specified temperature, it's going to cause the whole thing to burst, and that cap's going to come out, and water's going to flow. If there's no fluid in that bulb anymore, it's not going to operate as intended. So we need to make sure that fluid's still there. One thing to pay attention to is sometimes that fluid can actually just lose its color. So we need to pay attention to seeing if there still is fluid or if it just lost its color. So we're just making sure that there's still fluid in there. Here's an example of a sprinkler that uses a fusible link. So we wouldn't be looking for loss of color there um, because it just uses solder and then some frame uh, link arms in there to hold that water back. The next thing that we're gonna look for is uh, loading that's detrimental to the sprinkler performance, whether that's dust, debris, um, anything that can get applied onto that sprinkler that's detrimental to the performance. And then finally, we're looking for any paint other than the spring, that applied by the sprinkler manufacturer that's detrimental to the sprinkler performance. Now, when we say other than applied by the sprinkler manufacturer, how do we know whether it was applied by the sprinkler manufacturer or not? Well, one good way to tell, here's an example of a residential sprinkler that was painted white by the manufacturer. You can see that the deflector and the frame arms are all painted white and it was done all before we put that element, the heat responsive element, the cap and the seal in there. So that was done by the manufacturer, that is acceptable. If we saw a sprinkler, specifically if it's painted the same color as the wall, um, you see that someone came and just sprayed everything, that is not acceptable. The other thing that we see, you heard me talk about detrimental to the sprinkler performance. Previously, you used to just say, any paint on a sprinkler and you need to replace it. Well, the detrimental to the sprinkler performance allows the inspector a little bit of leniency um, when they're looking at it to determine if it's actually detrimental to the sprinkler performance. Um, so an example could be if I've got a tiny little bit of paint right here on the deflector, it's not necessarily gonna affect the activation of the sprinkler um, and won't affect the spray pattern. That might be able to stay. Again, it's at the discretion of the inspector. Um, but previously, if it was any paint, then you've gotta replace it. So a little bit of discretion uh, on whether or not it's detrimental or not. Another thing is if we've got paint on that orifice cap at all, that that would be detrimental, would not allow that sprinkler to operate. What you might see now is that inspectors, if you've got a bunch of sprinklers with the same type of loading, like paint or something on that, then they can send out samples for testing to make sure that they're all, um, they're all having the same heat response and they're still operating. So that's, that's an example of something you can look at there. If you are interested in learning more about what that detrimental to sprinkler performance could be, there is that an annex section here that kind of goes into more detail on what that looks like. So that's what the inspection of the sprinklers, that annual inspection looks like. Are you getting this done in your facility? Are you doing sprinkler inspections? Let me know in the comments, what's one of the biggest deficiencies you've seen when doing a sprinkler inspection? 
And don't forget to stay safe and stay informed.